Battle of the Philippine Sea. One of the key naval battles during World War II was the Battle of the Philippine Sea, fought on June 19 and 20, 1944. The American army emerged victorious, seriously damaging the Japanese navy with minimal personal losses. The reason for this vulnerability of Japan was that its army flew Mitsubishi A6M0 airplanes, which were completely ineffective against the powerful military equipment of the United States. By and large, the Japanese planes exploded on approach from simple machine gun bursts before they could do any damage to the enemy. During this battle, the Japanese lost 480 fighting machines, which amounted to 75% of their air fleet. As American forces approached the coast of the Philippines, then occupied by Japan, Japanese military commanders increasingly thought they needed to take drastic measures. At a meeting of the highest ranks, Navy Captain Motoharu Okamura said that only a suicide squad would save the situation. Okamura was sure that enough volunteers would volunteer to save their homeland from disgrace, and about 300 airplanes would have to be allocated for them. The captain believed that this would change the course of the war and turn the situation in Japan's favor. All those present at the meeting agreed with Okamura, and the necessary resources were allocated to him. For this mission, the planes were specially lightened, dismantled machine guns, removed armor and even the radio. That the fuel tank was enlarged and 250 kilograms of explosives were loaded aboard the planes. Now all Okamura had to do was find pilots for this desperate mission. Why are kamikazes considered some of the greatest blunders in World War II history? Japanese pilots agreed to commit suicide out of fear of embarrassment. But how did they manage to recruit pilots for such a gruesome mission? In fact, the superiors simply asked people to volunteer. And as for how anyone can agree to such a death, it is worth referring to the culture of Japan. In this country, shame is a very tense topic. If a pilot was asked by his superiors to sacrifice himself and he replied, no, I don't want to die for my country, it would not only dishonor him, it would dishonor his entire family. Plus, dead suicide pilots were promoted two ranks. So in reality, the volunteer squad wasn't really so free to choose. They could stay alive, disgrace themselves across the country, and sully their family's reputation in an extremely honor and pride-oriented society. Or the volunteers could die and be exalted as heroes who died for their country. The best aviation pilots died in the first raid. When the Japanese authorities decided to form a squadron of kamikazes, the first pilot they chose for the fighter role was their best lieutenant, a young lad of 23, Yukio Seiki. One would assume that when the guy was told that he was needed for such a demanding assignment, he replied that he would gladly serve the country. But there are rumors that Seiki shared his doubts with the reporter that this would be the best use of his talents. In October 1944, Seiki and 23 other pilots began preparing for the mission. On October 20th, Admiral Takihiro Onishi said, Japan is in mortal danger. The salvation of our country now is not at all in the hands of chiefs and ministers like me. It can only come from brave young men like you. Therefore, on behalf of our entire country, I ask you for this sacrifice and pray for your success. You are already gods, freed from earthly desires. But the only thing that still makes sense to you is the knowledge that your sacrifice will not be in vain. Unfortunately, we will no longer be able to tell you that. But I will monitor your efforts and report your actions to the Emperor himself. You can be sure of that. And I ask you to do the best you can. After this speech, the 24 pilots got behind the controls of their airplanes and flew to their certain deaths. However, during the first five days of flying they failed to make a single collision with American ships until they met their rival near the Philippines. The Americans were quite surprised by the suicidal attack of the Japanese. The kamikaze pilot managed to sink one of the not insignificant ships of the US Navy, an entire aircraft carrier. The collision of the Japanese airplane with the ship caused multiple explosions inside the ship, and it sank. In addition to sinking the aircraft carrier, the kamikaze group managed to damage three other ships. The Japanese took this as a good sign and expanded the suicide squad. It was supposed to be exactly psychological warfare. Of course, the kamikaze's main objective was to sink as many ships as possible. However, the Japanese believed that on the battlefield, the new tactic would certainly help them gain a psychological advantage over the enemy as well. The Japanese wanted to be seen as fierce warriors with no sense of proportion, 
who would rather die than lose and surrender. Unfortunately, this did not have the expected effect. Not only did the Americans easily repel the Japanese attacks, they also nicknamed the Kamikaze planes, Baka, which means, fool, or, idiot, in Japanese. Kamikaze pilots who flew torpedoes. In addition to lightweight airplanes, the Japanese created guided torpedoes for kamikazes, which were later nicknamed Katen. The procedure was as follows. First the pilot had to see the ship in the periscope, then with the help of a stopwatch and compass he had to ram the enemy ship almost blindly. As you might have guessed, it was not so easy, and it took months to train the pilots. Another challenge was the size of the torpedoes. They were large, which made it impossible to send them too far. The torpedoes had to be delivered first on large submarines. The mother ship carried six to eight catons to their destination. On November 20, 1944, five catons were fired at the American tanker USS Mississinawa. One of them hit its target and the explosion was tremendous. The Japanese thought they had sunk as many as five ships because the explosion was incredibly powerful. As a result, the leadership found the torpedo idea so successful that production of the Katon was increased. The pilots may have been taking methamphetamine. In fact, methamphetamine was invented in Japan back in 1893. But it didn't become widespread until the drug was brought to the attention of World War II. The German army used a type of methamphetamine called pervitin, while the Japanese army used the drug falapin. During the war, the Japanese gave the drug to their soldiers when they were too overcome by hunger or fatigue. Philopin also proved useful for kamikaze pilots. In the face of certain death, they had to be determined and collected. Therefore, pilots were given high doses of methamphetamine before landing in their flying bombs and flying for several hours towards death. This helped the suicide pilots stay focused until the very end. Another benefit to the soldiers was that methamphetamine increased aggression levels. And while this side effect for drug addicts is a rather unpleasant manifestation in normal life, for the Japanese kamikazes it served a loyal service in helping the suicide pilots stick to the plan while flying through machine gun fire. The last kamikaze pilot. In 1945, Admiral Matome Ugaki was appointed commander of the kamikaze units. A month later on August 15, when the Emperor of Japan announced the surrender over the radio, Ugaki decided that the most fitting end for him would be the same kind of death to which his subordinates walked daily. Before his final flight, he even had his picture taken. However, Ugaki had no piloting skills, and another voluntary suicide bomber had to be put on the plane for this purpose. On the way to his death, Ugaki radioed the following message. I alone am to blame for our failure. The valiant efforts of all the officers and soldiers under my command during the past six months have been greatly appreciated. I'm going to strike at Okinawa, where my men died like cherry blossoms. There I will collapse upon the vain enemy in the true spirit of Bushido, Samurai Code, with firm conviction and faith in the immortality of the Japanese Empire. Unfortunately for Ugaki, the mission failed, and his plane was probably intercepted before he was able to reach his goal. Well, as I promised, the video was interesting. So, subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up. See you tomorrow. Bye for now.